All right. Yeah, I wanted to show you um, just a few differences about on the uh, counters and what. Um, okay. First off, though, is don't worry about the colors. Uh, the color variation, that's something easy I can uh, change. And it's also, uh, well, I'll say this. If you want to look at the color variation, I would say only look at the German ones, uh, the top ones, or the green guys, uh, because there was no color change uh, in the file uh, when I printed on the left-hand side, which is from a very nice laser jet printer. And on the right-hand side is my not very good inkjet printer. Now the other two different things uh, to know about is the laser jet printing on the left hand side for both the Russians and the Germans was done on just that crap 22 pound bond paper everybody uses and the uh, the ones on the right were done with the um, that shipping label paper so it's much thicker and it's a different a different beast altogether. Um, also, the Russian guys on the other, on the, the uh, I also had to change the colors for the, because I forgot to uh, save the color settings that I had used um, for the Russians uh, when I did the ink on the inkjet at home. And the left one is on the laser jet that I didn't use at home because I don't have a laser jet printer yet. But you can see, I think, how much nicer how crisper they are even and yet again like I said um, what I, I need to do now is use the laser jet printer with the tra uh, the shipping label paper and seeing how how that reacts because um, uh, how I affixed the um, the uh, the prints uh, to the the counters with on the left hand side with the laser jet was uh, with the um, glue stick it was ironic because as I go I go to print I'm like wait a minute I'm like oh, of course you didn't print on the freaking um, uh, on the tra on the shipping label paper, Chris. So you'll have to actually use the glue stick thing. But yeah, what a diff. Uh, what else can I say? Oh, geez, and you can see I just and that is the only reason. Like those counters are just make it inside the hexes. Um, it's because I don't want to uh re I reprint the maps. I mean that's the size. Like I had printed the maps. Uh, ahead of time and then found those wood counters at the dollar store and I was like oh gosh do I ever want to use them and I was like okay I'm not going to go and reap they just make it so I was like oh thank goodness but uh, you know what I think my next rule of thumb will be all I have to do is just make sure that the each side in other words the square of uh, the counters each side is the same size as or less than one of the the sides of the hex that's it that's all you have to do I was like, okay, Chris, that's pretty darn easy. And I decided to um, put the counters around Niedenberg, uh, just kind of because I was thinking about uh, Kirk D when um, he had mentioned that. I know hopefully he is playing it because uh, he's, uh, he's a, a setup master and a, a teardown master for games. And uh, anyways, uh, he was uh, going to be playing uh, potentially the, um, the folio game uh, Tannenberg by uh, Decision Games. And when I played it for the very first time, Niedenberg was a bloodbath of an area for me. Uh, completely, a, a very different, well, I shouldn't say completely different scale, but it's quite a different scale. And uh, uh, the Decision Games one to this. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I had a lot of, uh, there was a lot of interaction around Niedenberg for me. So anyways, that's it. I wanted to show you the counters. And gosh, I can't wait to someday be able to, like I said, to incorporate all, you know, have good technology uh, proper fonts. I mean, I'm still using, I mean, bolt, you know, that's still bitmap graphics and so on and so forth, but boy, oh boy. Yeah, that should be good enough for can games. I'm pretty darn sure. Anyways, see you later.